Hello, everybody. Today we're going to be dissecting a horror thriller trailer track that I wrote. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Aaron James Eckhart. I work as a movie and TV trailer composer and also as a ghostwriter for several TV shows. So this track was created using all samples from Audio Imperia's uh, Floor Series Telekinesis Library, which I also created all of the sound design for. Um, and you can pick that up in the description below, but it's only available until February 24th, 2023. But you could also do a track like this with other samples and instruments as well. I actually did not have the like uh, Audio Imperia Flourish Telekinesis player when I was writing this track because it wasn't finished yet. So you're just going to see me working with the WAV files here, um, which are also included with the library. But basically with the player, the MIDI controller is broken down into like sections. Um, the main sound and then three or four different layers or stems. Um, so you can like mix and match elements if you want to. And of course, the player also has a host of built-in effects and parameters that you can adjust. So I won't cover that here, but if you go to their website, um, which I'll link below, um, I believe they have a, a video there that covers the player um, that's used for the Flourish libraries. So with that, I will let you take a listen to the track and then we'll double back and tear into it. Okay, so that was the track. Let's take it back to the intro here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just break it down into the different like sections, and then I'll try and cover most of the elements. Obviously, you can see there's a lot of random elements going on here, so I might not hit all of them, but uh, we'll just kind of talk about like what's in there. Um, <clears throat> okay, so on this intro part here, we're hitting off with a nice little impact, as you do in trailer music. Um, and so I kind of have, you know, I like to layer my impacts as I'm sure many of you guys who do this also do. Um, and I'll have different, um, just like a different vibe in each one of the impacts. Like one of them might have like a, like a lower end to it. And the other might have like a little bit more of a bitey punch to it. So in this case, uh, you know, I think it's probably doing something like that. There's your, your low end impact there. And you're higher. So together, you know, they create that little bit of like low end bitey punch together. Um, and I have that layered over a kind of just drone, just setting the tone here in the intro to this down here. You know, and if the drones aren't, you know, quite as long as you want them to be or whatever, I just kind of, you can easily crossfade them together and they sound fine and it just sounds like a longer drone. Right. Um, you know, and then we continue on here. Uh, it kind of starts to ramp up in this section, giving another edit point with some more hits. I think I use some different hits to kind of like change it up here. So I have uh, like a boom layer, another low end boom layer going on here. Kind of just a creepy, wispy boom, followed up by this guy. And that's just to create some edit points if this track were to be like used for anything that an editor might want to use it for. Um, and I like to create textures. I feel like horror music especially is all about like the kind of weird 
creepy textures that pop out at you. Um, and so I kind of just layered that in over the drone here. I have this, the, the way the library is, is it actually is broken down. There's like the main sound and then there's three to four different layers that build up that sound and you have access to all of those layers um, within that sound. So for example, this is one of the layers uh, in a in a patch called Subdued. And it's just these kind of creepy reversed, I don't even remember what that was, some type of string instrument that I have in here. And you layer that in over the drones and it's kind of creating this tension along with the risers here that are also layered, and I'll show those uh, right now, actually. So we have three different risers going on here. And they're all just, you know, pushed together to, or um, mashed together to create a different feeling you know they all have different like timbres and vibes to them so they build up and it has different textures going on you know and you could have just used the main you know vertigo or um actually this is these are all from the the vertigo patch um i just layered them separately because probably because i wanted to fade them differently and together they send you know pretty cool Moving on to the next section, creating a little break here so it can build up into the next part. There's a lot of drones going on in this, just for to create tension in between parts and within the sections and everything. Um, and I'm using this little riser here called Crawlers, layer three. And that just kind of helps wrap, ramp up into this next section where it kind of gets moving and we're introducing some, some more elements, some more movement, more motion going on here. And so this little percussive piece here, this, this is literally just like the same sample going over and over and over. Um, and what I did was just uh, decrease the volume um, on the second, third and fourth ones here and just left the here on the downbeat at the, the main volume. Um, and so that creates that accent going on there to kind of feel like it's, it's different. And it's not super noticeable, but it's just enough to kind of make it feel like it's slightly different and it's just moving on. And I layered it with some other pieces here to also give that, that accent together. And slowly, kind of gradually build up with different types of percussion as it's going on, so that way the track feels like it's building, it's moving forward. Did the same thing here with this element. You know, so you hear them together. It's kind of like you're being waterboarded. It's just like this annoying kind of sound just going over and over, carrying it until it builds up into these risers coming up here. Where's the risers? Risers are down there, down, down low. But we'll get to those in a minute. All right, so I think I started also introducing some more impacts as you do in trailer music. You gotta have some impacts going to give it uh, a little bit of oomph. And I've layered those again here. Kind of that little bit of low end carrying over with the kind of more um, pointy, impactful thing to give it that little bit of a, a punch going on there over the kind of the kind of washy low sound. And again, we have more drones going on. I'm using a lot of different layers just because I kind of wanted to, you know, layers within the the element itself. You know, as you can see, I have the layer twos going on here, layer one. Here's a full full drone coming up here. 
soon. Um, but I just kind of like to kind of take things apart and, and build up the sounds together, which you have the ability to do within the library also. Um, like I said, you'll have the folders, um, but then the library is also broken down with on the MIDI controller to where you can trigger the full sound or you can trigger the different layers within that sound. I honestly don't even remember what some of these sounds are created with. I'm like listening to them. I'm like, what? What was that? Was I squeezing a cat right there? What, what, what was I doing? All right, what do we have here? Introducing a little bit of pings. And that's once again to just kind of create some more textures, some more elements as it builds up and to kind of make it a little more interesting as it's moving on. Sorry, taking one step backwards to this section here. So I've introduced a little kind of creepy texture going on. Once again, with tra with um, horror music and horror trailer music, I feel like it's, once again, all about those creepy sounds that kind of just like pop out at you. And this is kind of like this like weird, creepy beast growl or whatever. It's like, oh, what is that thing? And I did actually add some reverb onto that there because I wanted it to trail over into the next section here. So what I do is is uh, I have black a little bit of black hole going on, which I love, by the way, um, especially for sound design stuff. But I, I'm keeping it dry as it moves or in the beginning. And as it moves on, I kind of ramp it up so that way it just trails over into the next section. And I do tend to throw reverbs sometimes just on the channel directly. I know some people would poo-poo on that, but whatever. That's what I do sometimes. Um, I will send it, you know, via aux too, especially if I'm using uh, like more instrumental type music and less kind of sound designy stuff. But it just depends on what I'm feeling and how I want to do it. You can break the rules sometimes. It's okay. Remember? That's what that's what everybody cool on the internet says. All right. What do we have going on here? All right. So in this section, I've got some more like kind of booms, impacts going on. Once again, layered. Um, you see, these are actually labeled as like stingers, um, but within the sounds themselves, there's different elements. So in this element, you know, there was something that kind of felt a little more like an impact to me, even though it built up into a stinger. And then that's layered over here onto this lower end, more beefy impact. So you put them all together. They'll have the, the stinger versions of them have kind of a little bit more like texture going on, uh, a little bit more movement. And I just kind of like how that felt like ramping up with the little tapping at the beginning. And if you're doing this at home, please remember to fade your endings because apparently I did not on, on this here. Don't tell anybody. It's okay. Sometimes in the mix you can't hear it. But if they have to use stems for anything, they're going to hear it. So fade your endings and intros or like beginnings if you're clipping anything off. Okay, so I'm building up here with some more risers going on. And once again, I like to layer my risers. So this one actually has is is one of the full patches. Followed up by a layer from this panic attack one here. Um, and sometimes not even just with this library, just like in general, I feel like the risers alone don't give me enough kind of like oomph coming out of the end section. So I'll layer it also with kind of like a, like a shorter transition that might have more of like a, 
just kind of like more of a ramp up going on that's a little more intense to just give that extra little at the end you know and this here is kind of on the higher end of the spectrum so it helps kind of hit you in the face as it's ramping out of there then we have a nice little break moving on into the next section which I was kind of going for, you know, I wanted it to feel a little like chaotic and hectic and like slightly cluttery. cluttery. Um, so there's a lot of elements kind of popping in and out here. Um, I've introduced a signature sound, which in, you know, if this, if I was like actually intending for this to be a trailer track, I probably would have introduced it earlier and made it sound slightly different and let it kind of evolve as the track goes. Um, I think, yeah, it's this one here. So I have this going and then it kind of repeats uh, as it goes on towards the end and then it then it comes back again, I believe, at the very end somewhere. Um, and so, you know, something like that element kind of like pops out at you. And so I may have used that more as a signature sound in the beginning and and moved it throughout the track if I were actually intending for this to be like a trailer track or something. So um, this is building up. I have a little bit more kind of like percussion layers um these are not necessarily meant to be like percussion within the library but that's the way i chose to use them because i wanted to highlight just the elements within this library and not use something else because i hate it when companies like release something and like oh here's this library but then they're just piling on all this other stuff and you're like okay cool but like what part is the library and i know they have like the stripped down like naked versions of them but i just wanted to build something that was meant to just be this this library so I have uh, all of the different percussion things that build up here um, or that are used as being percussion. So we have the low end here. And it's kind of more just punching you as it goes on. And we have the mid ones to, to kind of move it a little more. And obviously it's not anything super intricate percussion wise. But you layer them all together. Just like I don't know like in those those horror like trailers where they're just kind of you know somebody's banging their head against the wall or you know doing an axe or something like that and they start using that element as the sound that's going on as it's building up you know that's kind of how it w maybe we might follow something like that um and then obviously trailery music um having some more impacts going on here which I don't believe I used these earlier no nope, using them just here And I, I, I like this one because it had, once again, that, that ramp up going on. And I could have used a transition to do that, but I kind of just liked that kind of knife, uh, creepy knife sound like moving up into that. So we have the two elements here. We have this one, which has that ramp. And then this one, which is a little more kind of, it drags out a little bit more. Um, and it's kind of the lower end version that I wanted to layer with that. So together we have the, and you layer that with the different percussive elements. Let's get rid of this here. I did not intend for this to be a YouTube video. I would have cleaned it up a little bit more <laughs> if I was if I was planning to do that. Sometimes I'll work a little bit messy and I'll kind of go back and clean things up because I just I'm the type of uh, composer who just kind of throws things and see if they stick. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then I'll go and clean it up because I do I do I don't like things to be messy. I do like them to be cleaned up. Um, so sometimes I will when I know that a, a, a track is like approaching the finish line. We'll go back and clean it up for you know, my sake and whoever else's sake who might be taking a peek at the track in the future. So we also have um, what here is labeled a signature sound, but I'm using it, you know, trailer music once again, has a lot of, for love them or hate them, has a lot of uh, Bram sounds going on within tracks. Um, and this one wasn't actually intended to be like a Bram or a Brahm or however you want to pronounce it, but 
that's what I kind of used it for here. You can't really hear it a ton within the mix. But if you listen to it by itself, it's there. And so within the mix, we got that. But if you take it away, oh, something's missing. Something's missing. We don't know what it is. Um, once again, we have some drones just kind of filling it, filling in the space here. Zombie den. I had some zombies just like chilling in my studio that day. And I was like, okay, guys, you just want to like, you know, you want to get on the mic and record. They're saying something about brains. I don't really know what they're saying, but I recorded them. Oh, apparently I pitch shifted them too. Because these don't sound like any zombies I've ever heard. It's just one of the layers within the patch, which I think the whole thing probably does have some type of like zombie-esque sounds within it. Um, and for this, I actually, I like to have stuff kind of move around a little bit. So I'm using um, some of this Brower Motion stuff here. And I like to kind of just... Get it moving around so it's not so stagnant. Um, and then also layered that drone with a slightly more low end drone here. Once again, just textures building on top of each other. And then we have a lot of kind of just once again textures and elements that pop out at you kind of those scrapey scrappy violin sounds here um that kind of just pop out i have some here too those are fun playing on the violin i feel like a psycho just sitting in here like i'm like i'm just like some crackhead just <laughs> going at it on on the violin I don't even know how to play violin. Everybody walks into my studio, they're like, oh, dude, you play violin? I was like, uh, only when I'm doing horror tracks, pretty much. Let's see, we also have, let's see, voice textures going on. And these are just, I think these are the same sound, and I'll, I'll create like a second, um, just like a second channel here to put them on. So that way I can have them kind of overlapping each other. Um, and these I think are also kind of like doing movement, kind of some pans. I don't know why my stuff's not loading up here. Thanks a lot, Max Studio. You're so great. Let's see, maybe this one will. I guess that one doesn't want to either. Anyways, they are panning kind of opposite directions to kind of create. <sighs> some weird movement going on there um what did i miss here we have pings just kind of pingy nothing crazy um and i think that's oh we have another texture here what is this once again it's kind of like a ping but it carries it carries that kind of movement that and it's just to just to introduce elements within to create things that kind of like catch your ear. And 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 I was trying to make this a little more hectic here. Um, and I'm using the transitions here to ramp up into each section. Right. So we have those kind of. Try not to go too over, overboard with a lot of the the transitions into the hits, but that's kind of what I'm using those for here. So if you listen to, let's just listen to this section here, right? It ramps up into the impacts, I believe, to kind of make it feel a little more impactful. 
right? So it's just ramping up into that. So that's all that is there. Um, once again, building up with risers, layered, and I have those kind of starting from this end section here, going throughout the whole thing. And if I guess correctly, yep, I always automate, uh, well, usually automate those, even if they're already starting quieter and going louder, I'll still do like an automation on my own um, a lot of the times to kind of just help it build up some more. Let's see on this one here, I think I probably just cut out a little bit of the low end on that one. And then um, just used a stereo imager just to widen it slightly to separate it from this one here because I didn't want to pan them left and right I just kind of I wanted them where they were at um, and just use that stereo imager on that one to kind of separate it from the other one a little bit and so we have another break here creating some tension with another drone here it's like you don't know is something gonna pop out at you I don't know maybe and then it does you know punches you in the face with this little end hit here so we go from building up into this chaotic, hectic nonsense um, where somebody's banging their head on the table or chopping with an axe or whatever, and then it just gets quiet. Somebody says something or looking into a closet and some creaks, whatever. Oh, what's that in the closet? It's my dog. And then we have just the hits here at the end. Once again, building up with a, just a different percussive layers, just so I'm kind of, I wanted it to sound bigger at the end there. So we get the big uh, punch there. So we have, I think, I, you know, the same, the same layer that I've been using here to give it that sharp punch. Then we have just kind of that higher one there. And I cut it off because I didn't want to trail out I think with this, and I probably once again would have done like a cleaner, something like that. And then we have some layered impacts, which I don't believe I use this impact here. Ah, so if you remember, I said I used a kind of signature sound uh, back here somewhere that I would have kind of introduced earlier so that's a good example of this is the whole this is the whole um, sound here right this this impact but what I did was over here I used it as a signature sound for just one of the layers And it repeats itself here. And it comes back again as kind of just like a, a familiar element to kind of tie it back in together. Um, and I layered that hit to the one we were just talking about with this one here. And that's once again just to create a different different layer different vibe this one's kind of got a little bit a little bit more of the low end and this one's a little bit more on the high end spectrum i probably eq'd out some some low end here if i had to guess yeah so you just pulled a little bit back and also creates that motion with a little going on and then transition once again ramps that up into my hit to give it a little more impact so you match that with the impacts and the hit. You know, it just kind of makes it feel a little bit more big sometimes when you do that without. With. You don't have to overdo them. Sometimes I do because I like the, the little wishes. And then just end it on a nice little texture as it rings out. Some creepiness coming, 2056.
And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, this video turned out a little longer than I was expecting it to be. So if you happen to like it, let me know. And maybe I can do like way shorter versions where I focus on individual sound design elements or something like that. Um, and if you did like the sounds that were used in this track, head over to Audio Imperia's website, which I linked below, and pick up Telekinesis before it disappears. And other than that, I don't know, uh, step out of your stinky man cave, woman cave, studio, whatever it is. Uh, go take a walk, pet your dog, have a cup of coffee, hang out with some friends. Um, sometimes it's nice to just get out and, you know, not do music for a little bit. That's okay, too. Talk to you later.